chapter number 16, and starting in verse number 6 is where we're going to be at. If you've turned your, or you found yourself uh, there in Acts chapter 16, verse number 6, would you please stand with me as I read a few verses to you, and uh, then I'll pray and ask God to bless and meet with us in a special way today. Acts chapter 16, verse number 6, the Bible says, Now when they had gone throughout uh, Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were fit, forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia... After they were come to uh, Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passed by uh, Mysia, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, uh, Samo, Samo and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for... Um, the, the truth, the change, uh, what, what we can enjoy when Jesus passes by. And Father, I'm thankful for the day that the, the, uh, Jesus and the person of the Holy Spirit of God passed by and uh, showed me my need for Jesus as Savior. But I'm also thankful, Lord, that's not where you stopped with me. I'm so thankful for eternal life, but I'm thankful that not too long after you also pricked my heart unto surrender and, uh, and have been working on my heart about things ever since. And I'm very thankful, Lord, for uh, all that you've done and ask, Lord, that you just continue to work in each of our hearts, in each of our lives, giving us exactly what we need that would help us to get just a little closer to you tonight. Lord, I sure would love to see that testimony in our church, that little church that turned the world upside down. And I'm not asking for that testimony for a pat on our own back. I just know what comes along with turning the world upside down. That means souls are saved in our community. That means lives are changed in our community. That means those that were once addicted to some of the, uh, some of the hardest drugs in our area are able to enjoy victory from that. And families are restored and uh, drunkards are made free. And, and uh, Father, uh, Christians, uh, young people are able to be raised up in Christian homes and, and, uh, and have a, a Christian education. And, and Father, just so much implied when the world's turned upside down for your glory. I'd like to be a part of that, God. And I pray that you'd work in the hearts of our people, that we'd all have a desire, a burden in our heart to be a part of that. Help me to be a blessing to them tonight. I, I can already feel the, the, the failing of my flesh and my tongue uh, beginning to stutter and stammer even just a little bit. I, I pray for your power and your help. There's absolutely no way that I could be a blessing and encouragement to these dear folks without your help, without your power, without your enabling. enabling. Help them, Lord, to see Christ. Help them to see the Savior today. Help them to see your will for them. And Father, I ask that you please bless in all these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for standing. So every week, I've kind of said almost the same, similar introduction. We've been looking and we've been considering what the Word of God says is what it was or what led the Apostle Paul and those that served with him, what led them to a place of, of gaining the testimony? It was a derogatory testimony. It wasn't a happy testimony. Those folks that said, those that turned the world upside down, we're not saying, ooh, ooh, uh, uh, gee, that's so exciting. I can't wait for them to get here. They were, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a bad thing. They were, uh, they were upset with them. They weren't happy with the message. They weren't happy with the change. Uh, that was following uh, their fulfillment of the Great Commission. They weren't, they weren't liking what was happening when Jesus was passing by because it disrupts, amen? Uh, not, not in a negative way, not in the way that we see some of the wicked organizations out there disrupting. That's not what I'm talking about. It changes, though, amen? It, it takes away from those that are in it for the money. It takes away from those that are in it for the power, uh, amen? When, when Jesus passes by, there's some genuine, lasting change. And the devil uh, and... and, and, uh, and uh, uh, his um, 
principalities and powers, they don't like that change. And the world system don't like that change. And, and so uh, they got a testimony of turning the world upside down. And that testimony uh, didn't, it didn't just come because, uh, because of a couple events. There was a progression that took place as they got closer to the Lord and continued to be obedient to his call on their lives. And so here in this passage of scripture, uh, it's a little different than some of the other ones. We've been considering for a while, many times, we've been looking at the reaction of those uh, that uh, witnessed the change, that they had witnessed the turning uh, upside down of their communities, uh, the effect of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and that, uh, of course, the, the gospel is what the Apostle Paul preached, amen, and those that followed with him. That's what they preached. They, they went around and they, they delivered the, the message uh, of the gospel. In this passage of scripture, we see the Apostle Paul now. He's in his second missionary journey. Uh, he was uh, saved. He was commissioned to be a witness for the Lord. Uh, we see in, in Acts chapter 9, uh, surrounding his conversion there, in verse number 15, the, but the Lord said unto him, uh, Go thy way, for he, talking about the Apostle Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Amen. He wasn't alone in these missionary efforts. His surrender to the Lord, he certainly would have went if he was all by himself. But he had some others that come along with him. And all throughout the study of the Apostle Paul's life, uh, Luke was certainly a part of this as God used him to pen these words. Barnabas was uh, involved. Silas was involved. Timothy uh, become a pastor. He was involved. John Mark uh, was involved. Of course, there's other nameless ones. Uh, there's a message right there. Maybe those nameless ones that, that serve the Lord don't matter uh, what their name was. Amen. It was the work they were engaged in. Uh, but nameless, uh, other nameless ones that were surrendered to the call to share Jesus with a lost and dying people. These, they were just simply following, being obedient to, submitted to, surrendered to the commission uh, the great commission of Jesus Christ. Of course, as the Savior was preparing to ascend back to the Father, he had left very specific instructions to the local church uh, and believers that make up that local church. In Matthew chapter eight, uh, 28, verse 19 and 20, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. And whatsoever I have commanded you, uh, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We see that great commission as, of course, first and foremost, getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to that lost and dying people, uh, leading them and teaching them the importance of bapti uh, baptism, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and then discipling them, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, that uh, the Great Commission is, is bigger uh, than just simply delivering the gospel, amen. It, it goes beyond that. We, we, we don't just, uh, our, our, our job's not finished with a simple delivery of a gospel track, amen. We ought to uh, try to have a burden in our heart to not only share Christ, but even try to uh, take individuals under our wing, if you would, uh, uh, so to speak, and encourage them in the Lord and, and share what the Bible says and help them to, to grow in the Lord, amen, by getting them in uh, to the word of God. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. Hey, Jesus came to redeem lost sinners. Aren't you glad for that today? Uh, amen. He came to save the lost. He promised that if he left, uh, he would send a comforter and praise God as he ascended, the Holy Spirit descended and filled the believers. All those that receive Jesus as our personal Savior, we are indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. The person of God uh, in the person of the Holy Spirit uh, indwells those that have trusted Jesus as Savior. In fact, if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you're none of His. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 9, it says, but you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now listen to this. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is none of his. And you notice that spirit there, spirit of Christ, is not the attitude of Christ because that had been a lowercase spirit. It's a lower or uppercase spirit talking about the person of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Uh, we are left. We are here today. And not uh, Obviously, growing in our walk with him is vitally important. Reading our Bible is vitally important. Uh, singing praises unto him is vitally important. The preaching is vitally important. But we are left here today. We are here today to carry out the work of Christ. We are here today uh, to be his hands and his feet and his voice. 
We are here today to be that vehicle to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying people. The, this familiar passage of God's word, of course, what is con, uh, commonly called the Macedonian call. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he hears the call in a dream. He yields to the call uh, and he takes the gospel to the European nations. Now, aren't you glad for that today? Amen. I ain't a racist uh, by any means. I love diversity in a church. I kind of wish we were get, we'd become a little bit more uh, diverse at times. It's not a, uh, a, a, a fault on our own, or not that we don't try to just reach everybody, but it just happens to be the vast majority of us, not all of us, have some European heritage. Hey, aren't you glad God called them to meet, meet the needs, the spiritual needs of the European nations? Amen. Uh, maybe we would have never heard the gospel if God had not called, if that Macedonian call had not come about. I'm so thankful that the truth of the gospel was delivered to me. Amen. I'm thankful somebody was willing to uh, preach and I uh, was just uh, this weekend playing volleyball with some folks over at Lighthouse and I was th Amber, uh, Amber Foot, well it used to be Foot Brombo or whatever ma her married name is, but uh, she is uh, the granddaughter of Brother Lee Foot, uh, the dear brother who with an oxygen tank, you say, I, you know, I just, I'm just I just don't feel good enough to, to, to be a soul winner. I just don't feel good enough to share Christ with an oxygen tank and oxygen on his nose, walking door to door, uh, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, knocked on my wife's uncle's door. And my wife's uncle never went to that church, but he told us about the church, amen. We went there six months, shortly six months after we would started attending there. I got born again, amen. And uh, I, was, uh, I was thinking about that when I was uh, playing on the same team as his granddaughter uh, in, uh, on, on Saturday. And I'm thankful the gospel was delivered to me, amen. I'm thankful that I got to hear the gospel message, but there's so many out there have not heard the gospel message. They have some sort of, they're confused. Uh, if they have heard anything about the gospel, it's never been clearly presented to them. Uh, they've heard the name of Jesus in a byword or a curse word, uh, but they've never had somebody just simply present the, the wonderful, the simple plan of salvation uh, to those uh, that are lost. Now listen, I don't think I'm going to deliver you any new news in this next statement here, but, if, but it is the message of the cross that will turn the world upside down. I, I cannot emphasize that enough. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, that is, it is the message. Of the, if we want to turn the world upside down, it's not, a, it's not going to be about more programs. It's not going to be about more, more ministries. It's not going to be a, a, a financial thing. Amen. It is going to be about what we do with the message of the cross. If we are going to see real lasting change in our communities, if we're going to see real lasting change in our day, it will only be in the fulfillment of the Great Commission. By God's grace, I'd like, to, like for us to consider the expectations that we find in our text revealed to us in the text that I just read here as I preach on this thought. Our submission to Christ's commission. Our submission to Christ's commission. In verses 6 and 7, we see, first of all, the call of the commission. The text, of course, it reveals uh, things about the, the call that I think each and every one of us need to understand. I think we need to understand and we need to accept. We see there was a call of service there in verse 6. And now when they had gone throughout uh, Phrygia and the region uh, of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. I think it's important that we keep in mind here that it was, it, this was not a vacation trip for the Apostle Paul and for those that were serving with him. Amen. They weren't just going around, uh, uh, living in the laps of luxury, traveling around to see the sights. Amen. They had been, they had given their lives over to the use of God. They had left, in in many cases, left their families. Amen. Left their comfort. Uh, left those things that that uh, gave them, uh, uh, made them feel. Uh, stable, and they left a lot of those things for the instability of serving God. Amen. They they left those things to serve the Savior. And their days were consumed with with ministering and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And listen, what a blessing to see uh, in these that 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 uh, turn the world upside down a, a genuine burden in their hearts for the need of others. Before we make a mistake of thinking that this is something, some extraordinary Christianity, that this is some picture or some portrait of, of, a, of a super Christian, listen, I, I believe that this is what the Apostle Paul simply told us in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, is our reasonable service. Hey Amen. This is just our reasonable service. Hey, if we desire to live lives that are Christ-like, then our lives ought not to be lived uh, as if, as, uh, with, with the desire to please ourselves. Amen. If you're saved today, 
Uh, if you're born again today, you too have been called to serve the Lord. Amen. Uh, the, the Christian life is not a sideline service. Amen. A Christian life is not a, not a, not a service or not a life of idleness uh, in the Lord. If you are saved today and you still have breath in your, in your life, amen, uh, you are called to serve God every single day. We come across countless opportunities to be used of God. On uh, Wednesday, Brother Jonathan was talking about redeeming the time for the days are evil. He talked about the word circumspectly uh, briefly as well. And, and listen, we only have so much time. I got to thinking about that. We only have so much time. And, we, well, hopefully, and, and listen, even if you live to 100, that's still not that much time when you can, when all things considered. Hey, man, we, we just are, we don't have that much time. So it's important that we're good stewards of the time God has given us. That circumspectly, of course, primarily has to do with watching for pitfalls and, 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 and the, the, the uh, caution of the Christian life, not getting entangled with the snares of the devil. But I also believe there's, uh, there's an application there for looking for opportunities. Amen. Having our eyes open, be, being sober, being vigilant, not only for the devil, but I also believe that, that looking for those that need Christ as Savior. Wanting to listen to the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. Wanting to make sure we're in tune with Him. Wanting to make sure we're in, not only within His boundaries, but we're also in His will. Too many profess Christ as Savior, and they, 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 but they never find time. They never desire to serve the Lord. As I, I know that there are things that, that we have to get done in this life. I understand there's obligations to our family and different things like that. Please don't misunderstand me. I understand there's, a, there's an order uh, in, uh, in, in serving the Lord, our, our homes, our churches. I understand all of those things, but serving the Lord is important. Hey Amen. Listen, you, you want the, the feeling of fulfillment? Hey, you want something that will actually offer and bring you a real satisfaction? Serve the Lord. You can chase money. You can chase every multi-level marketing scheme. You can, you can load up your bank accounts. And at the end of the day, you're just going to want more. Yeah. Amen. But all the blessing is, is you can't ever overindulge in the service of the king. Yeah, right. Amen. You could serve him every day. And let, guess what? When you, when you hand out some gospel tracts and you kind of get addicted to it, that's okay. Hey, when you get a little pumped up about that and say, hey, you know what? I want more. That's okay. Hey, you can't ever overindulge in serving the Savior. Ain't that a blessing? Hey, go out there and become addicted to ministry. Amen. It's okay. It's the only place. It's all right to become dependent and addicted to serving God. Amen. It's a good thing. And can I tell you, it's the only thing that will matter in eternity. We see not only that call call of service but we also saw the, see the call of sacrifice all the way through verses 6 through 12 we, we see that in the in the context of those verses we we see that there was a great sacrifice that had been made on uh, by, by these by these that were with the apostle Paul the apostle Paul and those we talked about this they left their homes they left their families they left those those comfort zones to serve the Lord amen they they weren't always welcome and accepted Amen. There was a lot of times they'd, they'd be beaten, they'd be ridiculed, they'd be, they'd be mocked, and they, they, uh, their lives would be threatened. And really, uh, most of these that were with the Apostle Paul, especially many of these names that we mentioned that were actually named in the Bible, many of them died martyr deaths. Amen. They died for, not, for, for nothing more than preaching Christ and Him crucified. And they would not recant to the message of the gospel. They kept on preaching uh, about the wonderful blessings that take place when Jesus passes by, amen. It was turning the world upside down, but it was also many of the world system was against them. And they had to deal with that. Serving the Lord came at a price. Amen. There was a sacrifice involved in serving the Lord. I, listen, are you willing to sacrifice in order to serve the Lord? Are you willing to sacrifice to be used by God? Listen, think about that. That's something you've got to ask yourself. Are you willing to, listen, are you willing to, to, would you count the cost? Are you willing to give the cost to serve God? A life of serving the Lord, uh, it is the best life. I can't, listen, I, I, it's the best life, but it's not always easy. It comes with some difficulties. It comes with some trials. It comes with some, uh, so, some tough times, amen. And there's going to be some times where we'll be rejected. Amen. That rejection is going to come with some frustration. We're going to be tempted unto discouragement. There's going to be times when uh, all we can do is simply just wait on the Lord. Patiently wait on God's timing and His plan. 
And sometimes that's hard. We've been called to give sacrificially of our lives for the needs of others. Hey, can I, can I just encourage you? Remember, think about today. Ponder on all that Jesus gave for us. You say, Listen, I don't know if I'm willing to count the cost. I'm not, I don't know if I'm willing to, to offer that sacrifice. You think about the only one who had the right to say no was the one who gave everything for us to enjoy eternal life. He became our sacrifice. He stood in our place. I know I never do a real good job of appealing to your flesh in regards to serving the Savior, but serving Him is not a matter of convenience. Hey Amen. Listen, if you're waiting for a convenient time to yield to the Lord, if you're waiting on the, just things to get a little easier, your calendar to open up just a little bit, to yield, to submit to His personal and private call on your life for sacrificial service, the sad truth is you'll most likely go to the grave as one who did not do very much for Jesus or at the very least did not live to the potential he had for you. I believe serving the Lord requires that we die to self so that we could serve him in whatever capacity, whatever way, whatever ministry, whatever way that he chooses to use us. We'll never be, I believe we'll never be what God desires us to be. We'll never be uh, living up to the potential that he has for us if we're not willing to pay that price. There's a sacrifice. There's a call for service. There's a call for sacrifice. There's also a call we see in verse 6 and 7, a call for submission. Now, when they had gone through uh, Phrygia and the uh, region of Galatia and were forbidden to the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, listen, after they were come to My, uh, uh, Mysia, they essayed to go into uh, Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. The Apostle Paul those that were serving with him, amen, they, they, those that served the Lord with him, they weren't just, like I said, weren't just wandering around aimlessly. Amen. They weren't just kind of going, well, hey, what do you think? Uh, today, where you, y'all want to go, I mean, just over, they, they weren't spinning the globe. Amen. Back then, the world was flat anyway. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. It's a joke. It's a joke. Still flat, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. It's just a joke. That's a joke. It's kind of a funny thing to, to laugh at, though. Listen to I was, just, I was trying to see who the flat earthers were in the, in the, in the fellowship. They're like, oh, he's, he's going he's gonna to talk about the flat. It's a joke. Earth is round. Okay? Pretty sure. They didn't just spin a globe. Amen? They didn't just look at a map. I, I, did I get anybody mad at me? I hope I didn't. They didn't look at a map and, I think, you know, uh, they weren't just wandering around. Amen? He ordered their steps. He guided their path. He gave them direction. Amen. They wanted to go somewhere, but the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God said, no, that's not where you're going to go. They wanted to go another place, and the Holy Spirit of God wouldn't let them go there. Amen. He was guiding, and he was directing uh, their paths. He, everywhere that the Apostle Paul looked, he, he saw a need. And, and uh, honestly, he probably would have been very scatterbrained in, in his Christian walk uh, if he didn't have the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, because everywhere he went, he saw people in need. It probably would have been, Brother Bob, probably been pretty stressful without the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, when you, get, when you get sincere about what you have in Christ and what those that are lost ha have a need of in Christ, yeah, if you don't have the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, it's going to get discouraging because you can't reach them all. And you, you're just going to be so confused, you're going to probably shut down because you're going to be overwhelmed with how many people are there that need Christ. But the Apostle Paul, he... He just wanted to serve God. He wanted to share Christ with those that are lost, but he knew he needed to follow the will of God. I said, oh, man, everybody needed to hear the gospel, right? Everybody needed to hear the gospel. There was nothing wrong with the gospel getting to those areas that he wanted to deliver the gospel to, but they needed to hear. They needed to hear uh, it needed to be uh, according to God's time and in his way. Serving the Lord requires a submission on our part. Amen. It requires a yielding, a surrender to God's will, to his work, amen, according to his clear, precise, specific instructions that he has given us. Listen, we, we can do good things. I'm sure you've heard of this before. We can do good things, but if it's not where God is leading and it's not within his will, then it's not best things. Amen, the best things is to be doing God's will, God's way, in God's where and at God's when. 
Listen, we, we might not always understand what God is doing. We might be a little bit confused on his leadership. We, we might not understand it uh, fully. We may, he, he may let us in sometimes and allow us to comprehend some of that. Sometimes we may be completely clueless in his bigger picture, but we need to trust his sovereign will. We need to trust his way. Amen. We, listen, we need to get to, a, uh, get to the place that we want, want uh, what God wants more than what we want. I, I think... Um, Serving the Lord, sometimes serving the Lord, it might not make much sense. Amen? But God's never wrong. If we're in his will, amen, if we're in his way, if we're doing what he wants us to do, it's never wrong. Amen? Listen, we might not know uh, on this side of glory, we might not fully understand uh, on this side of glory, but oh, pra uh, praise God, in that sweet by and by, amen? Uh, listen, uh, we, we need to submit to his will because it's always right. Things might not always go as planned. It might not be easy. Amen. But there is no reason. There's never a reason for us to abandon the work of the Lord. There's never a reason for us to question God's perfect will. We see a call of the commission. We also see a compliance to the commission in verses 9 through 10. Uh, I think we, we looked at that, that call, but think about what drove the apostle. Think about what, what compelled him to submit to that call. We see that burden that was delivered there in verse number 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And listen, there, there's no doubt in my mind the Apostle Paul had a, a burden, a surrender, a passion for reaching others. Everywhere he went, he was looking for somebody who needed the Savior. Amen. He never got over. And listen, I, I believe it's because he never got over what Jesus had done for him. The Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, wicked man, uh, persecutor of the, of the Christians, the one who tried to stamp out uh, that, that first century Christianity, uh, was uh, the one that was there at the stoning of Stephen. At the very least, murderer by association. And Jesus saved his soul. Gave him that security that the believers so wonderfully enjoy. Gave him a, a calling that was righteous and that was good. Uh, and, and that brought a, a change to the hearts of many. He just never got over what the Lord did for him. Praise God. Wouldn't it be a blessing if God's people just wouldn't get over what the Lord did for him? Doesn't that drive you crazy when you hear those things? Uh, man, I, you know, I used to... <clears throat> uh, back in the day, I... Oh, how sad that is. May that, I, hope that, I hope that never rolls across my lips uh, when, I'm, when I'm testifying of, uh, of a time where I was closer to the Lord uh, than I am today, amen? Uh, listen, I hope that never rolls across my lips where I say, well, I used to be in the will of God. I used to be on fire for the things of God. How many testimonies out there like that? How many testimonies out there like that? I used to be, there was a day in my life where I was, on more, I was more on fire, I was more surrendered, I was more excited about being used by God than I am today. Dear friend, can I tell you, by definition, you're backslidden. I know the Lord doesn't give visions in our day like he did the Apostle Paul's day, but there are millions who stand in need of help. I think there's so many, so many in this day, they get consumed with the humanitarian needs of today and the needs of this world and, and uh, saving the world and all those different things. And, and listen, I'm all right with being a good steward of the world. I'm certainly okay with uh, meeting humanitarian needs. Uh, but the primary uh, thing or the primary need has always been the spiritual No matter what the physical aid that we have the opportunity to deliver, we're going to die someday. You know, all those, all, I, think about, uh, I was thinking about when I, the humanitarian aid, remember not too long ago, the, the, uh, several years ago now, I guess, the, the, the uh, Ebola thing that broke out, you know, and that was kind of, that was a little nerve-wracking, you know. Those people that had like, was a 90-something percent fatality rate. I mean, it was bad. It was a bad thing. But, you know, so those few percent that lived, they're going to die someday. Now listen, I, I'm all for trying to, trying to heal those folks and, and you try to, try to get them better. And, and I think all those things are real good uh, and, and a blessing where we can help folks that are in need. I'm not trying to downplay the humanitarian needs in our, in our world, but the most important thing has always been the spiritual need. That's the burden delivered to us as well. 
Amen. God might not lead us in a dream like he did the Apostle Paul. And if a dream is of the Lord, it will be perfectly lined up with the word of God. If your dream is outside of the boundaries of God's word, that is not of the Lord. Amen. Listen, we are, surrend we are surrounded everywhere we go, surrounded by those who've never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They may not know, they may not even understand their need, but, but in their hearts, I believe they're crying for somebody to give them something that will last, something that will bring satisfaction. Everywhere we go, people are looking for something. They try to find it in, in what the world offers, and of course we know that that's all dead end. And it, it always leaves you wanting. There's no satisfaction. And, and in these dark days, listen, I believe that people are desperately seeking something that's going to give them some hope. They need to be pointed to Jesus. We see the burden deployed in uh, that first part of verse number 10 there. And after he had the, seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And we endeavored to go into Macedonia. That word endeavored has the idea of seeking in order to find. And to crave or to demand for someone. After that vision the Apostle Paul received. Uh, and uh, they, the, him and the others. They were, they were determined to go where the Lord led. Their, their faces set toward Macedonia. Now listen, keep in mind. The Apostle Paul, he had plans. Right? We see in the first part of these verses. He He's got an idea where he wants to go. Amen. I don't think there's anything wrong, at least heading in a direction and waiting for the Lord to steer you. Get out there and share Christ with somebody and just be yielded for him to steer you when he wants you to go somewhere else. Amen. He had a, a, a plan, but God placed a burden for Macedonia upon his heart there in that dream. And that, after that, there was, absolutely, there was only one place he could go. It was Macedonia. Isn't it amazing how God works? Listen, oftentimes, it's just a blessing. And, and I, love the, I love the personal work of God in our lives. I love the precise work of God in our lives. Listen, I think a lot of times, he places desires in our heart long before that door even opens up for us to fulfill that desire for his glory and for his honor. Listen, we need to seek God. Hey, we need to be yielded to him. We need to seek him for that, those, those precise burdens, those specific burdens in our life. I, sure, I pray continually that God would just give us a burden like we've never known, a craving for getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying people like we've never had before. We see the call of the commission. We see the compliance of the commission. Lastly, in verses 10 through 12, we see the charge in the commission. These last couple of verses that, uh, that, are, that we find in our text in this passage of scripture here, they kind of they set the stage for us for the visit there to Macedonia. They, they share with us some truths that I think, every, I think it's good for, for all of us. I, it was certainly, there was, a, there was a reason for these truths offered to the Apostle Paul and those that were, uh, that were serving alongside of him. But I do believe there's a great parallel, a great application for you and I in these passages of Scripture that we have before us. We see that they, they were to share the gospel. Look at that last part of verse 10 there. Assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Amen. God had given a very clear call of the where, but it was the what? Amen. The message of the gospel that was so important. Luke says there, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, that they assuredly, uh, that they were assuredly called to go into Macedonia to preach the gospel. They, 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 they would do other, there was going to be other things that they would do there. Uh, of course, there would be other acts of kindness, I'm sure. Oh, but their primary objective, amen, the, the thing that was motivating them, the thing that was driving them, uh, the, the mission, the primary mission that they had as they went to Macedonia was to get Jesus to the lost and dying of that region. All believers, every single born again believer has been called to be a witness for the Lord. Our world, our neighborhoods, our communities, our workplaces, our grocery stores, our gas stations, they are filled with those who need Jesus. And can I say, I believe filled with those who would receive Jesus if some of God's people would be yielded and surrendered to getting the gospel out. We get busy. Sometimes we get busy and we get, we get selfish. And I, I know we don't like that word. I, I don't like that being applied to me, but really that's what happens. We get selfish. It's uncomfortable. I don't have time. 
What will they say? Those are all selfish. Those are all selfish excuses. But you, that, that God, you just don't know what, what will happen with that gospel track. I mean, you just don't you just don't know what God will do as you're simply yielded to be used by him. I've said this so many times when we start going out with our secondary groceries, primary souls. That's what's going to turn the world upside down for Jesus. Hey, go get the groceries. That's OK. Let it be secondary. Hey, man. Well, I don't need this aisle quite yet. It's not in my pattern, but there's a ton of people down this aisle. Hey, man. You go out there and you get those gospel tracks through there. Yeah, it might be a little inconvenient. Maybe even take you five or ten minutes longer shopping. And I know we hate shopping. Unless we do that for a living. Then I hopefully you love it or you have a miserable existence. But, but go out there and get the gospel of Jesus Christ to those folks. You go to the gas station. I pay at the pump almost every time. Listen, I'm, I'm going to confess a little bit, okay? I pay at the pump every time. Listen, I need to get a burden to go in prepay. I know it's inconvenient, but that gives me the opportunity to give a gospel track out. But I'm busy. Right? It's cold outside. We live in Michigan. We exist to be the salt and light. Amen? We are here to be that vehicle to get the gospel to a lost and dying people. We also see in, in verse 11, that first part of verse 12, we see that charge here to stay the course. Therefore, listen to, kind of listen to the, 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 the turning and the moving here in the leadership. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to uh, Samothracia and the next day to Neapolis and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony. We are so used to instant gratification. We say, well, we need to know this information. Boom, Google. I mean, we got we answer in seconds. Right? What's the, what, what, what's the direction? Oh, we, can, oh, we're, we need to get over here. We can fly. We can get there quick. Listen, these folks, there was, there was some toiling. There was some work in this course. There was plenty of opportunities. I guarantee plenty of opportunities on their way to Macedonia to get discouraged and distracted along the way. And, and I believe that although we enjoy the same power and same enabling of the Holy Spirit of God that the Apostle Paul, I believe that in our day, there's more distractions and more opportunities of, of, for discouragement than there was in his day. And, and, and they had it pretty rough. But in all of our conveniences that we enjoy and all the things that you would think, they didn't have gospel tracts back then. I mean, they, were, they, they, they counted it a blessing if they had a, a, a portion of the written word of God. We carry our own pocket-sized Bibles. We have it digitalized. We have gospel tracts. And yet we are more distracted by a lot of times those electronic devices and distracted with our lives and the hustle bustle and, the, and the, uh, everything having to go 90 miles per hour to keep up in life. We get so distracted and, and we get discouraged and we miss out on so many opportunities. Honestly, I don't even like to think about, I don't even like to think about the missed opportunities. I, I kind of try to remove them from my mind. If anything, I, I, let the, I let it sink in enough to stir me to, to do right from here on out, but I can't dwell on those missed opportunities because I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that there's way too many of them. We need to stay the course. Hey, man, don't let the shiny things get you off course. Hey, man, don't, get, don't let the distractions and the discouragements get you off course. Hey, it, it might be a long way. It might be a while uh, before you get to exactly where the Lord is leading you, uh, but you stay the course. Hey, man, stay in his, in his will. Stay in his way. Keep on being led by him. Keep on being led by him. Keep on being led by him. Don't, don't, don't get yourself uh, off of God's plan. Lastly, we see in that last part of verse 12, Secure the task. Amen. That's a charge for, for them. It's a charge for us. Secure the task. The Bible says, and we were in that city abiding certain days. Amen. They, they were there in Philippi certain days. They weren't, they weren't looking to, to move on before it was time. Amen. They, just, they, they, were, they were there to accomplish a work. They were there to secure a task. They stayed the course, but they also finished well. 
Listen, we might feel if if uh, we have a that uh, that uh, uh, we we may uh, we we need to be very careful that we that we don't get going on this distraction. That not only do we not get distracted from the stay in the course, but we don't get distracted and and quit early. Amen. It's so important that we don't quit early. I want to leave this life having emptied myself in the service to the king. I remember in football practice, the coaches would prepare us for fourth quarter. And in that fourth quarter, I'm not a big, you know I don't use analogies often, sport analogies often, and it really has absolutely nothing to do with what today is. Um, but, but I was thinking about this, leaving it all, leaving it all, uh, emptying ourselves for the service of the Lord, but that was probably the primary sport. Others may have had the same experience in other sports that they play, but the coaches would push us in those, for those last few moments. And that would be the hardest work. That would be the most grueling work. And they'd be pushing us. And they'd be hollering fourth quarter. And they would be motivating us to keep on going. Why? It's because that's the time we're just about ready to give up. But though, that's the time, most of the time, where most games usually come down to who's going to actually win. Is who wins in that fourth quarter? Who's going to play the hardest when they're exhausted? Who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna keep on pushing on when they're tired, when they're hurt, maybe even injured? Listen, dear child of God, don't you want to finish well? Amen. Hey, can I tell I think we might be in the fourth quarter. Amen. If we're not in the fourth quarter, we are just, we're around in the end of the third. Amen. We have got to be getting close. I want to finish well. Amen. We need to, we need to commit to securing the task that we've, been, we've, we've received. Amen. We, we might not be called to a foreign land, but the Lord has a work for, for every single one of us to do. And I believe it's specific. It's very personal. I can't do your work. You can't do my work. Amen. Listen, I, I hope that you want to have the same confidence that the Apostle Paul had at, at the conclusion of his life. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. The Bible says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love this appearing. It was this attitude of securing the task. Amen. It was this attitude of finishing well that I believe that was, that, that was evident in the lives of those who turned the world upside down for Jesus. If you're all ready to quit at halftime, amen, third quarter comes in and you're, you're, you're ready to quit, those discouragements come along. You know, I think the sad testimony is I think many quit right, right in the start. I think after the first score against them, after the first difficulty that comes up their way, they're throwing in the towel. They're saying, I'm ready for sideline. I'm ready. For, I'm ready. Uh, they're tapping their helmet and saying, take me out, coach. I'm done. Well, how sad, how sad a testimony. Hey, man, we need to stay the course. We need to secure the task. Hey, there's a lot of lost folks out there. I believe a lot of lost folks out there counting on Green Meadow Bible Baptist Church to be that vehicle to get the gospel of Jesus Christ. When I prayed, asking God to let us be a part of turning the world upside down, I didn't, I'm not praying that for fun. I'm not praying that half-heartedly. I'm not praying that in any sort of fakeness or because it just sounds good. It makes for a good message. Brother, sister in Christ, I genuinely, sincerely want to see us do something for the cause of Christ in this community. Amen. And wouldn't that be a blessing to be a part? I, we'll find out in glory how all that works, but wouldn't it be a blessing to see more lives changed, to see more homes restored? We got a lot of hurting in, in our area, our specific our area specifically. And of course, we reach all the way out to Schoolcraft, sis. I mean, we got we got parchment. Uh, I mean, we got we got some we we got we got some grounds to cover, not just this area, but there's a lot of folks hurting in these areas. Amen. They're discouraged. They're 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 trying to find every anything they can in the world to give them some sort of satisfaction. But we've got the answer, and it can turn our communities upside down. But we got to stay the course. Amen. We got to secure the task. Would you stand with me? I hope it was a blessing to you. I, I got jumbled up on a couple of the.
points of thoughts I was wanting to give out here, and I don't know if it came across exactly the way I wanted it to come across. I just, I'm just going to trust that the Lord gives it to you exactly the way it's supposed to come across, amen, and, and uh, that he'll get the glory for it. But listen, I understand the message is simple today. I don't think there was anything difficult to understand in the preaching today. I, I certainly, I don't think I teased the intellect, as Brother Tim Green would call it, uh, for, for us tonight. But dear brother, dear sister in Christ, when the Lord calls, we need to go. Amen. We need to yield. We need to submit. Amen. Where he leads us, we need to follow. Where he commands, what he commands, we need to do it. Amen. There is no greater joy. There is no greater satisfaction. Try it. Tr prove me wrong. Please prove me wrong. Go out there and put a, some big goal of gospel tracks and then, and then, like your life depended on it, fulfill that goal. 100 gospel tracks. You'll probably do 200 the next week. Because you'll be hooked. You'll find satisfaction like you've never seen before. And guess what? It's something that it's, it's okay to indulge in. Hey Amen. You might not be able to eat all the peanut butter you want. But you can give out as many gospel tracts as we have on that track rack. Ain't that a blessing tonight? Listen, there's no greater joy being used by God. I'd ask that you'd surrender with the words of the prophet of old there. Lord, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. Are you willing to embrace that commission? Are you willing to yield to it? Are you willing to submit to it? That commission that we've all been given? Are you prepared to step out by faith? Are you prepared to surrender your all to Jesus? I might not be popular, but I believe it's right. With eyes closed and heads bowed, how's God worked in your heart today? As Miss Holly begins to play, whenever she gets ready here, whenever she's ready, she's going to start playing. How's God worked in your heart? Maybe some folks need to rededicate their lives to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know I preach on it about every service, but you know there's still some, there's still some that are on the fence about it. There's some that are hesitant. There's some that are, that become overly concerned with the potential, the likelihood, the probability of rejection. And it holds them back. It distracts them. It keeps them from staying the course. It'd be a blessing. God's people just get a real burden in their heart for the lost. As we talked about the plight of the lost this morning. And we spent some time considering those terrifying words of the Savior to those who were left in their rejection of Jesus. I never knew you. How sad is it to think about maybe some out there that will hear the words, I never knew you, but would testify is because I was never told. Now I understand the Bible tells us that he's given, he's, he's given the truth of himself in everybody. Everybody knows there's something bigger out there. I don't believe in a real genuine atheist. I believe in people that are fighting against their belief in God. But according to the Bible, I believe, I believe everybody knows deep down there is a creator God. 